Hi, in this video, I want to show you how I build a more complex workflow that consists of using the API command to get the text of an article or book and something we call batch prompt processing to extract relevant information. And at the end of this video, I will be publishing the workflow that I build as a template that anyone can install. So I want to create a new tag. I'm going to call it ask questions of book. And I'm going to add one field called URL. And um, another field called full text. So the first thing we want to do is enable us to get the full text from URL. So I could, so I'm going to add a button to the tag. I could add it to the field, but I'm going to add it to the tag here. So I'm going to call it fetch full text, convert to command node. And then we want make API request. So I'm going to make this bigger because otherwise it's hard to see. So the configuration here, the URL is obligatory. And for the URL, we're actually going to look up field and we're going to use this field. So we're going to say that the value of the URL should be picked from this field on whatever node that this command is running on. And then we need parsing, parse results html to tana paste so what this does is it tries to take in html from a website and extract the contents and convert it to tana paste and the contents the process will not be perfect at all but it does get rid of most of the junk and prepares the text for being sent to um, ai and then the final thing is we're gonna say that we want the output sent into the full text field so that's all we need. And now we need a URL. So for this, I'm going to take the Project Gutenberg, uh, Dr. Montessori's own handbook, right? So this is quite a long text here. Um, definitely far too long for you to be able to paste all of this into, um, into ChatGPT, at least uh, currently. So let's see what we can do about that. So I'll put the URL here and let's try fetching the full text. Just hit that button. And there's the full text. It's kind of, um, as you see, it, it doesn't look that beautiful, but it does actually have the full text of the book and that's what we want. And since we don't really want to read the book like this, I'm just going to hide always hide this field. So just hide it there. It's there. We can pick it up. We can refer to it. So now I want to ask a question. So we're going to have a question. And the question I ask is how can children best learn how to read? And then we need another button here. But actually, one thing I thought of is this command fetch full text doesn't really need to appear when we already have the full text. So we can put a node filter and the node filter is really a search expression. So the search expression would be full text. And here we want to do not set. And we see that the command now uh, disappeared. But if we put in a new as questions of the book, we see that it appears because it has no full text. So in this way, you can really make this feel very, um, very, very nice. Um, so we have this fetch full text, and then we want, um, let's say, ask question, and that's going to be ask AI. And then we need a few things. We need a prompt. Um, and the prompt actually, the, as I said before, the problem is that this text is too long to send into the context window. So the context window is the maximum number of tokens that can fit into the model. And the models have different maximum context windows. Currently, the GPT 3.5 has around 4,000 tokens and the GPT uh, 4 has about 8,000 tokens. And that will be expanded to 32,000 tokens sometime in the future. Um, but anyway, that is far too little for us to fit everything in. 
add to that that the context window includes both the information that we send in and the information that we get out. So if we sent in 4,000 tokens, we would not be able to get anything out, which is not very helpful. Um, so by default, um, Tana only sends half of the context window maximum to enable you to also receive something back. But we can actually tune that as we'll see. So um, what we can do in Tana to get around this, and this is kind of an advanced use case for the prompt, is use something called the branch prompt context. And so if we, actually I'm gonna open this because I wanna, oops, I did not wanna do that. I want to do this. I wanna grab a comp reference to this and put that in there. So I'm gonna say that the batch prompt context is the full text. And that means that we can write a prompt and we can refer to this using sys context. And what it'll do is it'll take this full text, it will split it into pieces depending on the context window and the tuning that we'll do in just a minute. And it'll put that chunk, so for every chunk, it'll put it into this context, and all of the text around this context will be will always be there. So let's see what we want to say. We want to say um, extract all relevant information from the following excerpt relevant to answering the following question. And then we bring in the question. Um, if there are relevant direct quotes, return them surrounded by, yeah. So this is obviously where you can do a lot of prompt engineering and experimentation back and forth. Um, I will say that our um, prompt um, uh, workbench does not yet understand batch prompt context. Um, so, uh, but you can certainly take a chunk of text uh, long enough to fit and then you can ex experiment with this. Or you could even go directly to the platform.openai and experiment with this until you get a prompt that gives you what you are looking for. But then very importantly, um, or only return the token end if there is no relevant information. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because GPT is very chatty. So ideally we'd like it to not say anything if there's no relevant information. But in practice, it will say, I'm so sorry, but there's no relevant information, which is not helpful to us. So instead, um, we're trying this trick and the token end will automatically get filtered out. So all responses with the token end will not um, be inserted into Tana. Okay, and now we have the information. Um, then I talked about tuning and that's this fill window, fill context window percentage. And so, as I said, by default, we let 50% of the context window be free for the answer. But in this case, we know that we're gonna send in a lot of text and we um, don't expect to get um, you know, very much text back. So we could probably set this safely to 80 or even 90. Let's try 90%. So we're sending in a lot of text, we're expecting a few sentences back. Let's put 80 to be sure. And of course, the fewer, the higher percentage here, the fewer um, requests we have to make. And there's one more thing, which is the target node. And we want to, so we need another field for this. We'll call that um, intermediary output. I'm clicking this to add it to super tag. So this is a nice way of just adding fields to super tag without having to go into the definition. And there we are. And ask question, and we can add a node filter on this one too. So we'll add a node filter that says intermediary output is not set. Boom. And of course it shows because there is no intermediary output. Let's try to run it. And when I'm running, I'm gonna close this for a little while because I wanna show you something. Um, there is something in a browser called a console, and you might have heard us, if you ever had a bug, you might have heard us ask you to go into the console. And usually that's just full of messages that are relevant to developers. But if you put OpenAI as a filter here, that will actually show you all of the messages that we send to the OpenAI API and all of the messages we return back. And I find sometimes when doing more complex things like this thing, it can be really useful. So let's see what happens when I would click ask question. Uh, 
So we see here, we can see the prompt that it's sending and we can see the response. Um, so we see we, in the response, we see the prompt and we see the response. So a lot of these are end or only returns token end. Uh, how can you, no relevant information available. You see, it's very hard. It's, it's very bad at just returning end, but um, these are still cleaned out. Um, and then suddenly we get some stuff that's useful. Um, and that's great. The reason why this is not injected yet is that what we're actually doing is we're running all of these queries in parallel, uh, but we're waiting for all of them to return because we assemble them in order so that the order of the output matches the order of the input. And here you see, um, this looks really good. These are um, extracts from the text um, that it relates to, it believes relates to reading and writing. And um, of course it might not be perfect, but you know, we went from a, I don't know, 50 page book to something much more concise. And you see the button disappeared because we now have intermediary output. Um, but we don't really want to read this let's hide it. let's grab a reference to it and then let's hide it and let's go and add one more one more field let's say um, answer okay and again we're gonna add a button so we're going back down here so now we have um, generate response generate answer so let's maybe we're gonna read them this to to um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like that. And this one, so let's first set a node filter since we're getting good at this. Um, node filter should then be intermediary output not set. No, actually it should be answer not set. Well, let me use this one first. So ask AI. I'm gonna make this big. Ask AI, and we're gonna just put the target node in there. And then I'm gonna grab this and put it here and say the answer is not set. And we've got the intermediary output, we've got a prompt and the prompt, and actually, so we have a, a choice of models. Now, this depends if you've gotten in from the wait list. So some people still don't have access to GPT-4, I do, and so, GPT-4 is definitely, it's, it's has a bigger context window. It's quite a lot more expensive, but it is much better at reasoning. So it's not a bad idea to mix using GPT-3.5 to kind of map over a lot of text and extract excerpts and then using GPT-4 to structure. So let's see. Um, so um, below is a set of excerpts and quotes that all respond to the question, question. Please um, structure this as a comprehensive answer organized as hierarchical markdown using indentation instead of hash to indicate header. Include all uh, information provided um, include all and, and do not add any thing not provided so we don't want it to hallucinate because it might think it knows things about learning to read and we don't care about that we want only the things from the book um, include all information provided do not add anything provided but feel free to restructure organize and group the information available. Let's see, is there anything else here? Um, do not add anything. Okay, well, let's try. Okay, uh, oh, I know. Uh, ignore any, any sentences about information, information not available because some of, some of the, even though we asked it to use end, uh, sometimes there are some nodes that slip through that says, oh, there was no information and we don't want the model to be confused by that. And then we need to provide the actual context. So we're gonna just 
uh, actually grab this one, uh, excerpts like that. And well, we can just quickly add, uh, open the prompt workbench to see. Oh, question is okay, we need to grab actually a reference to this, let's see, to this node to put in there. And here we see that X let's see, let me put that on its own line. Nope, not that one. I wanted this one. There we go. So you see how the prompt workbench is really helpful for us to see. And let's check how many tokens this is. This is 2,000 tokens, so this is not a problem at all. Okay, so I've checked the prompt workbench. I'm gonna just close this to make the intermediary output go away. Uh, we have a target node, we have a prompt, we have a model, we have a temperature. Um, yeah, let's keep that at zero because we don't want it to hallucinate again. And um, let's see what it comes up with. This might, oh, did we forget to set the target node? Um, let me just see if it's sending. Oh, it is sending it. Did you know that you can command click on the button to see the button? Uh, I'm just seeing, I don't think we set the target. Oh, we did set the target node. Oh, we set the target node to intermediate output. That was not intended at all. We wanted it to be answer. Okay, so what happened to our intermediary output? How much? Let's try this again. Okay, now this thing is spinning properly. And as I said, this might take a while because GPT-4 is much slower than GPT-3.5. And this is quite a bit of text that it has to read and respond to. And there we go. Um, the cool thing is, as you see, we don't just get text output, we actually get um, structured output, um, which is pretty cool. Um, because every all the output from um, all the output from AI is parsed by Tana paste. And what I did in the prompt you saw was basically teaching it very quickly to write um, structured markdown, which is something it's quite able to do. And um, yeah, uh, obviously we would have to check very carefully whether this is actually a good summary of that book. Um, and if it's not, then certainly there is more prompt engineering that you could do. Um, but as a first attempt, I think this is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so just to show you that this is now a workflow that we can use again because um, it took a while to set up. It needs some, I could probably spend more time making it even more perfect, but let's find another book. Let's see what we should look. Gutenberg, um, uh, let's see. Um, Gutenberg, education, that's what I was looking at. Biography of Johannes Gutenberg. But what if we try to take this article? This is quite a long article. Let's try to take this article. So we start a new tab, we'll call it Gutenberg. We see now we get all the three buttons. Actually, we could have also hidden the three buttons because 
making, you know, showing ask questions at this point makes no sense, right? So we could also here at the node filter say, um, so fetch full text, uh, no, ask question. Let's see, I need to expand this. So uh, full text has to exist. So there, and generate answer. Um, intermediary output has to exist. There we go. So now it should be correct. Let's see. Let's see if this works. So we have this thing. Actually, fetch full text is also wrong because URL, let's make sure we get the right URL. So I'll just copy the reference to this has to be set because otherwise you can't do anything. So you come here and you see, huh, I cannot do anything because I don't have a URL. But once we add this URL, then we get the option to fetch the full text. We click that, boom. Now you see right away, let's see. Yeah, got all of it. Um, we can now ask a question. Oh, we don't have a question. Actually, I should check for that too. So question also needs to be defined. See how we're kind of iterating to building up this little kind of mini app almost. Okay, so we don't have a question. We could fetch the full text without the question, but we can't. So what do we want to know about Gutenberg? Um, so let's see what were his child what were Gutenberg's child what was Gutenberg's childhood like I actually don't know the answer to this and so now we can ask the question I'm sending two prompts only so it is not as long as the previous one which was 18 prompts I think but it's still longer than um, what you would be able to at least with GPT 3.5 it might fit in GPT 4 so there we go perfect that looks very good and now again generate answer yeah we have intermediary output so we can generate answer and of course in this case that's not really necessary because um, this answer is already pretty good but um, we can still ask for it and we'll see what we what we get out of it so yeah uh, so we have this template now it seems to work pretty well and now I would like to publish it. So how do we do that? Well, um, yeah, so it's funny how it took this text and it just restructured it in a very nice way, actually. Yeah, nice. But you see here also that some of the information is lost, um, maybe. So yeah. Anyway, that's what, that's for prompt engineering. So what do I do to publish this as a template? So I could keep this as an example. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, indent this, I'm going to say, um, ask questions of a book, and I'm going to add a description. Uh, AI enhanced template that fetches text from a URL. Um, Let's say um, extract uh, its information piecewise and const is that not a word? Constructs a and writes a structured summary requires GPT four. Okay, so the thing is, I cannot um, publish this here. Share this template because I'm in a, um, I'm in my private workspace. So I need to move this to, and I have a read-only workspace. I'm gonna just, yeah, let's move it to today. And then I'm going to, now you see that it lives, it's still linked here, that's fine, but it lives on a workspace that's published. And now we can share this template. And we see here that there's a bunch of nodes um, that live in my private workspace. So we need to just bring those in and our template makes that very easy. 
And now we have a template. It has this nice title. It has some description, a super tag, five fields, three commands. It's AI enabled. And boom, I copy that link. I give it to anyone else who's using Tana and they should be able to just run it. Uh, I'm going to share this video and I'm going to share the link to the template. So please try out the template. Let me know, make your own template, share it and uh, you know, improve on this template and share it actually. I'd love to see where you take this. Thanks a lot.